Okay, this is another try at this kind of broad subject of emotion, human psychology, meaning of life, um, whether it is a contrivance of emotion or whether it is something rational, logical, um, discernible intellectually. Um, uh, first off, um, the red wine. I'm sorry if you took what I said or how I said it offensively. I didn't mean any offense. Um, any passion I seem to be expressing is more a reflection of frustration because it's a subject that, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, whether it's the uh, limitation of the language or, or what, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's a difficult to get to the same place. To, a, to an understanding because you say things you use words that are just such a trespass on what I'm trying to convey I mean they just are like oh you're back to steps you're back to zero again so I mean it's like you use the word intuition I mean intuition in my Bible in my logical Bible is bullshit there's no such thing um, you know it's it's th that's not the way to make a judgment um, and so I would go further so let's take that you made the point basically that there is no there's no logical there is no logic without emotion um, and, and my argument is no look emotion allows us to understand some things we can gain an understanding of a context but emotions as my point are is that emotions, feelings, intuition um, is garbage as a judgment tool. Can't use it to make judgments. We can only use it to understand. So we can, f we feel. So we can take that feeling and appreciate it and understand it when we see it reflected in other things. My point would be is the equation that defines our equality is a logical equation. All right. I mean, you can deduce it logically. You don't need an emotion to be able to say, yes, I'm human, he's human, the genetics are essentially the same, the, the life form has an, an equal merit to my own merit. Um, its capacity to feel is substantially it's the same. There, ergo, um, its welfare is just as important as my welfare from the universe's perspective. There is no distinction. Um, and so in a calculation where one could say, well, if we kill one person, we will save 20 people. Well, the logical thing to do is to kill the one person. This is why I brought up the Mr. Spock thing, because in one of the movies where Spock dies, you know, he's basically this line, um, you know, the, the uh, something of the one is less important than the something of the many. I can't remember the key word there. <laughs> Uh, the welfare, yeah. So, I mean, it's basically the welfare of the one is, you know, not as important as the welfare of the many or vice versa or however it went. But anyway, the point is made. Um, and that's a logical calculation. That is something you can do with a calculator in a sense. It is a, it is a, an, a, 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 an equation. Um, there is a human on one side and a human on the other. And my second point would be is that we can take that equation a step further. We can say, okay, well, we understand that feeling is an important issue and that thinking is important, but it's not quite as important. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't subject retards or, or diminished capacity humans to some sort of horror um, or slavery or some other thing because we think they are not worth concern. And so likewise, animals and other feeling things, uh, we have to have some appreciation for their welfare as well. And um, in, in, so we can make calculations. And then my point is that when we make these calculations with these perceptions of value, um, our judgment is always corrupted if we allow the emotion to control it. Because if we, empathy is not logical. It is a feeling. And my point is, is I can make, I can, I can, if I use the equation, the equation will tell me is the smelly, scurvy, ugly rat has just as much merit as the soft, cuddly, empath the thing I can feel empathy for, the kitten. 
All right, and if I have to make an if I have to make a judgment about which one is sacrificed or which one is harmed, I don't have a right to be influenced by my subjective attraction to the kitten and my subjective repulsion by the rat. And that is my point, is that if we allow emotion to invade our judgment, then we make decisions that aren't rationally meritorious. They are corrupted by a prejudice or a preference that is built into our psychology that is part of the natural design. And as I find the natural design to be flawed, that is sort of the source of this initial judgment in the first place is that if you don't believe in a God you've got to see look at nature for what it is and you've got to realize it's ignorant forces it doesn't have compassion it doesn't have empathy it doesn't have rational judgment it has none of those things it doesn't have any capacity to make a value judgment and so we have to we're we're the power now we're the we're the God and uh, if we're going to allow that corruption of nature, that emotion that nature used to motivate us, that, you know, to drive us, if we're still going to set our goals and we're still going to make our judgments based on that emotion, then we are, we have defeated our intelligence. We have, we have converted our intelligence into, as I pointed out, a scheming tool. It is a a device we use to gain our satisfaction, but it is not a device we are using to um, define our purpose or our goal and or our judgments and that's where the real value of intelligence is it isn't it isn't a means it is essentially the faculty that will allow us to define the end to, to define the, the goal the purpose the objective and so instead of being motivated by our emotions we have to be motivated by our intellect and we can still use our emotions to compel us to fulfill the purpose to drive us but um, we have to be careful not to let the emotions make the judgments because the judgment is always going to be corrupted if we allow it to be emotional because emotions just can't they, they just can't they can't achieve the necessary objectivity I'm not saying they can't they can they can mimic good intellectual judgment it's possible to have your to 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 recondition yourself to condition yourself so that your emotions do mimic your intellectual judgment but it'll have to be something you do on purpose um, because if emotions just don't work that way we are conditioned animals um, and our conditioning is usually not consistent with um, logic and reason it is more consistent with uh, nature's purpose. It is more consistent with these prejudices and preferences um, that are crude and um, that judge people and circumstances um, very selfishly and in a very narrow and personal context. And that's the corruption. And so that's, um, I, you know, this is the, the, the sticking point's always going to be, like I said, as long as, you're, as long as you're tied to using words like intuition and words and, and, and giving emotion some sort of role in judgment, not in enlightening us, not in informing us or giving us some knowledge, but as a, as a, as a useful tool in the making of judgment then we're going to have a disagreement, you know, because that's, to me, the danger. That's the thing we must avoid. There's the function of the brain does require us to feel about our thoughts. We must, um, like a, a good logical thought, when we reason well, we feel good about the result of that logic. We say, yes, I got the right answer. Getting the right answer feels good. So when we test our own logic, our own thinking, and we test it through and we say, ah, I see no flaws, the logic looks pure, we gain a feeling of satisfaction. And it's through that process that the brain reinforces ideas. And that's how we acquire a principled understanding for something. That's why somebody could say something like, give me liberty or give me death, because they are, they are understanding the principle of liberty and the value of it. And it's become a thought that has emotion tied to it, but the 
the, the, the thought was an intellectual thought. That's what it grew out of intellect. It didn't grow out of emotion. It grew out of an understanding of the value of liberty. Um, and once that value was reinforced and understood as, as yes, this makes sense, this is, this is important, um, it, passion grows out of that because it becomes reinforced. Uh, so that's sort of what I'm saying is, is that the logic has to come first in terms of um, building a new psychology. We have to essentially recondition ourselves and the way we recondition ourselves is to first get it logically right and then try to reinforce that logic into our conditioning. So then when we see a rat, we don't see a rat, we see a kitten.